So now let's take a look at some practical examples in Perl of putting together an array. Let's open up our text editor again and we'll see how we've given array some values. Now when we initialize the scalar variable all we did is we used the dollar sign and the name of the variable and then the is set to operator followed by the value. An array works in much the same way except what we do I'm going to initialize this array and I'm going to call it creatures. Then we use the is set to operator in just the same way. But then we use brackets. And when we put our values in, we separate each value by commas. I'm going to put some arbitrary names of animals in there. And then when we finish with our list, we close the bracket and we put the semicolon at the end. And there's our array. Let's save that, save that. And we're going to save that back in our testing directory and I'm going to call this one array.pl. Now in order to access one of the elements of our array, all we need to do is type print creatures one in square brackets. Don't forget the semicolon at the end. You'll notice also that, as I was just mentioning earlier, although when we're talking about the whole array we use the at sign, when we're talking about one element within it, we use the dollar sign. Let's save that, and we'll go over to our command prompt, and we're going to go to the relevant directory and we're going to run our array Perl program. It returns the returns of cat. If we look back at our script, you'll notice that cat is the second element within the array. But because of our zero indexing that happens when we initialize an array, dog is element 0, cat is element 1, lion element 2, and ele elephant would be element 3. So we always have to remember to take away 1 when we're trying to work out which of the elements we're going to access. If we then wanted to add a new element to our array, we could add one very simply by using this function, push. Now the push function, we just type in the word push and then it takes two of what we call arguments. We're going to look in more detail at what functions do later, but for now, all we need to know is that we use the function name push, and then we put an open bracket. You can put a space in there, or you can leave it out. depends on what you want. I usually put a space in just to make it a bit clearer, but there's no reason that you need to do that. So the two things that we feed to the function push are, first of all, it wants the array name as its first argument. The things within the brackets here, within these brackets here and here, are the arguments of the function. Now the first argument is creatures, which is the array that we're pushing an element onto, thus the name. And the second argument is the element that we're adding, in this case, tiger. So if we save that, and we're going to print creatures element 4. Let's try again. And it prints out the cat followed by tiger. So it's very easy and quick to add a new element to array after we've instantiated it. There's nothing set in stone about an array. And after it's initialized, we can then do whatever we want to it. We'll take a look at some more things we can do with arrays in our next movie.